the Meg, aka Megalodon, roamed the oceans long after dinosaurs were wiped out by the great meteorite. It was one of the largest and most dangerous hunters that have ever lived on Earth, as well as the biggest shark. But then, about 3.6 million years ago, the last of its kind disappeared from our planet, leaving only huge teeth for modern archaeologists to keep finding. There are a few theories about why it could have happened, but scientists might have found the true reason. The Megalodon, which means Big Tooth, was the largest shark ever to exist. It reportedly lived around 20 to 3.6 million years ago and was truly enormous. Its bite was more powerful than that of a T-Rex and likely any other powerful predator that has ever roamed this planet. It's probably not surprising since this marine creature had extremely strong jaws that could span from 9 to 10 feet wide. That's enough to swallow two grown-up people side by side. The jaws were also lined with 276 teeth, and they reached 7 inches in length. That's as long as a small hedgehog. Once these teeth got worn down, the shark got rid of them and grew new ones. Such large sedated teeth helped the Meg to eat meat easily. The shark itself could grow up to 59 feet long. That's twice the length of a London double-decker bus. The animal was also pretty heavy. While a fully grown T-Rex weighed about 8 tons, the weight of a large megalodon could be more than 30 tons. With no competitors, the enormous shark was the real king of the oceans. It hunted other sharks, large fish, and even whales. Then why did such a magnificent creature disappear from the face of the earth? The previous theories mentioned the great white shark. The megalodon is usually described as some gigantic version of this marine animal. And this is a common mistake made because most people think these creatures were related. But in reality, the Meg looked more like a modern bull shark. Its snout was snout, its lower jaw was rather flat, and long and massive pectoral fins supported the animal's weight. But what's more important, the ancestors of today's Great Whites existed at the same time as the Megalodon. Now, with great size comes great clumsiness. And although the Meg was huge and powerful, it was also not as nimble as smaller and quicker Great White Sharks. Great Whites could have rivaled a Megalodon for food, and were often more successful hunters thanks to their agility. They couldn't fight the Meg openly, but were fast enough to steal its food. So according to this theory, the only food left for the Megalodon were whales and equally big marine animals. Grown-up Megs could easily catch such beasts, but their offspring were much smaller and more vulnerable than their parents. Could smaller sharks have used this to their advantage? Maybe while Mega Sharks were still little, they became a meal for Great Whites as well as bull and tiger sharks. Even at those times, a great white shark could reach the length of 20 feet, while a megalodon kid was definitely smaller. But even if there had been no open confrontation between young megalodons and smaller grown-up sharks, meg kids wouldn't have been able to find food for themselves to grow to adulthood. The reason is the same. The population of other sharks was growing, and they were rivaling each other and the meg for convenient food. The more great whites and other sharks appeared in the oceans, the less food remained for young monster sharks. Eventually, they probably starved. But it's just one of the theories that try to explain why the Meg went extinct, and here's another one. A new study has shown that the Meg was most likely a warm-blooded predator able to regulate its body temperature, and that might have been the reason why this species disappeared with time. Scientists analyzed isotopes of the tooth enamel of the megalodon and concluded that the animal could easily maintain a body temperature that was around 13 degrees F warmer than the temperature of the surrounding water. Such a temperature difference is much greater than what other sharks living at the same time as the meg had, and it's large enough for the ancient predator to be classified as warm-blooded. These days, most fish are cold-blooded. Their body temperature is the same as the surrounding water, but some sharks, like mackerel sharks, keep the temperature of all parts of their bodies a bit warmer than the surrounding water, but it doesn't make them completely warm-blooded because they simply store heat generated by their muscles. And in mammals, body temperature is regulated by a special region of the brain called the hypothalamus. Anyway, the Meg's warmer body allowed the animal to move faster, deal with cold water better, and spread out all over the world. But eventually, it might have led to a disaster. The Megalodon lived during the Pliocene Epoch, pronunciation. It began approximately 5.3 million years ago and finished 2.5 million years ago. During that period, global cooling occurred. It also caused the changes in sea level, which the Megalodon probably didn't survive. 
The main problem for the predator was to maintain an energy level allowing its body temperature to remain elevated. But to do it, the animal had to eat a lot, and I mean it. But it was a challenging task in a time of changing marine ecosystems and while competing with newcomers, such as the great white shark. If this theory is true, then the amount of energy the Meg had to use to remain warm could have contributed to its extinction. This new information is very important to us. It shows that many marine predators in modern oceans might be experiencing the effects of ongoing climate change too. By the way, have you heard that there have been several cases when people were sure they had seen the Meg? Or at least some similar extremely large monsters. And these sightings happened relatively recently. For example, in July 1916, the New Jersey coast of the US was terrified by a series of shark attacks. They happened during an oppressive heat wave when hundreds of beachgoers tried to find shelter from the heat near the water. People described the culprit that had caused all that havoc as a giant shark, much bigger than any regular one. Since then, scientists have been debating which shark species was involved in those accidents. The most popular guesses have been the bull shark and the great white. A picture of a huge shark roaming the Pacific Ocean not far from Guadalupe Island appeared in 1999. The creature was nicknamed Deep Blue. It could be distinguished from others by a wavy pattern separating its gray back and white belly. But even though some people claimed it could be the infamous Megalodon, experts came to the conclusion it was a female white shark, the largest ever seen. The average length of a male white shark is 11 to 13 feet. Females are bigger, up to 15 or 16 feet, but Deep Blue reached more than 25th in length. No wonder people were confused. For the last time, Deep Blue was spotted in 2013 near the western coast of Mexico's Baja, California. But look, there's another jumbo shark, and you can meet it in any part of the world. The largest specimens can reach 45th long and weigh about 5 or even 6 tons. Could it be if not the Megalodon itself but one of its relatives? Again, a wrong guess. That's the basking shark. This animal prefers subpolar seas, with temperatures not higher than 58 degrees F. Even though some of these animals do migrate to warmer places. Like whale sharks, basking sharks are harmless and don't attack snorkelers or divers. These creatures have loads of small teeth, but they don't use them when feeding. Instead, they swim with their huge mouths open and swallow plankton. A grown-up basking shark can filter nearly 2,000 tons of water per hour. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.